Okay, I hope everyone is having a good Monday so far and enjoyed the past holiday that just went by. I wanted to make another video and talk about the Packers and just, you know, point out that, yeah, for the most part, they are who we thought they were. You know, now sitting at 4-8, and eight, Green Bay has now lost 7 of their last 8 games with only one win against the Dallas Cowboys that really we probably should have lost that game to. Uh, but hopefully this loss ends any hope for making the playoffs because this is not a playoff team. Okay, this just isn't a good a good team in general, nor a championship caliber team. They're not even close to that. But then, how the hell do you expect to possibly win a football game when your defense is out there giving up forty points? I mean, I don't. I mean, I, don't, I mean, it certainly wasn't already bad enough that we played against the Titans and. The defense while making some stops, you know, because the thing is, it's not all on the defense. But I'm just going to start with them for a second. I'm going to start with defense, and I'm going to get to the offense because it's not. It's because it, at the end of the day, the reason why the Packers suck is because an entire team is the reason why. It's not, you, it's not right to blame one side. But like I said, just to stick on the defense real fast. After coming off that game against the Titans, where they were just pretty much making Ryan Tannehill look like Peyton Manning. You know, is if that if that wasn't bad enough, they come out now against the Eagles on Sunday Night Football and give up three hundred and sixty three yards on the ground. I mean, that is just ridiculous. You know, giving up three hundred and sixty three total yards of, of running against the Philadelphia Eagles, three hundred of those yards were combined between the starting quarterback Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders. How the hell could you possibly expect to win a football game when your defense is giving up that many points and that many yards on the ground with 7.4 yards average per attempt? I'm sorry, man. The offense, the offense could have gone out there and scored 50 points. The Eagles would have put up 60. That Because that's just how terrible and soft our defense is. Yes, I understand the Packers have a lot of defensive wolves this season. You know, dealing battling injuries. Okay, battling injuries, losing our top pass rusher, Rashawn Gary, to an injury, losing Eric Stoltz, who we, but to be fair, before he got hurt, Eric Stoltz wasn't having a good season at all. He was probably our worst corner out of three. Out of our three starting corners between himself, Jair, and Russell Douglas. Eric Stokes was probably the worst. So him going down to injury really isn't, isn't really that big of a deal. He was just, he's just, he was just having a complete terrible sophomore year. We didn't go even further by benching Darnell Savage, who's been playing like shit since last season. You know, this isn't something that's just coming out of nowhere. Darnell Savage has been tr playing like trash since last season. Last season, that guy's name was barely called. And this year, in this year, his name was only called only when he's getting completely burnt down beat in coverage or when he's just missing tackles. And it's just and it's just and it's just a shame and so disappointing just seeing how this team has completely struggled to replace Nick Collins. Nick Collins, we lost Nick Collins all the way back in the 2011 season, and it's just been just hell trying to find a, the right guy to replace him. They still haven't. So that's so that's so that's pretty much the result you're gonna get, man. That, that's the result you're gonna get when you have a defense that's been run by a coordinator. Then Joe Barry, who's just absolutely horrible. But then again, what are you going to expect when you are hiring a guy who coached the 0-16 football team defensively? What do you, what, what do you, what, 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 what do you possibly expect? You thought, he thought, what you thought he was going to come in here and, and utilize the talent that we have on defense? Clearly he hasn't done that, has he? But then again, this has been a problem even when Mike, Mike Pettin was still here in Green Bay and how awful the Packers' run defense has been for a long time. Our run defense is horrible because we have, we have, no, we have no bodies up front. We get, we're not good in linebacker position, and we're just stick, and we're sticking with that 3-4 scheme that, and just getting run down our throats. So I don't know, so, so, so something needs to change because it's, 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 it's embarrassing to watch team after team just play the Packers and just always having their best games or somebody's always getting their first something against the Packers' defense. You know, before we before he played before we played the Cowboys, Ceedee Lamb didn't have a single 100 yard uh, receiving game yet. If he plays the Packers, boom, the the guy just goes completely off. Hell, you can go all the way back to Week One. Justin Jefferson, that dude had already that dude already put up 
almost 200 receiving yards against our defense. Just in the first week of the season. We play against the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans have one of the worst offenses coming into the game. And again, like I said, they made Ryan Tannehill look like Peyton Manning. I understand that their folk, their main focus was stopping Derrick Henry, but when you needed to make plays in a passing game, you weren't doing it. You just wasn't doing it. Sure, we got a couple of turnovers, but then like I'm going to get to the offense in a second. But still, that's not enough to cover up how overall how terrible they played in that game. And then now we come to this game and this past game, and again give up 300 plus yards on the ground. And 40 points. You're not going to win any football game playing like that. But, you know, Matt LaFleur, he just, he just wants to stick with his guy, Joe Barry. He wants to stick with his guy until and, and the wheels fall off, and it's fine. You go right ahead and stick with him. And, I, and, I, and, and, and just watch, and watch that soft-ass defense get completely bullied next week and for the rest of the season. Because it's not going to change. I said that the last time I made, I made, I made a video. Nothing is going to change. This is a complete disaster season. It is what it is. I've, I've completely fully expected that. But you hope for the, you know, when you watch the Packers play, you hope for the best, but you expect the worst. And you can always expect the worst whenever that defense steps on the field. They're literally one of the worst defenses in the league, and there's just no getting around that. So, you go on to the offense, and the offense managed to put up 33 points. You know, even though Aaron Rodgers turned the ball over twice, the offense still managed to move the football quite well against the Eagles. You know, if I'm an Eagles fan, I'd be pretty worried about that. You know, despite the fact that you guys are, what, now 9-1, 10-1, you know, despite the great record and being a top team in the NFC this year, if I was an Eagles fan, I'd still be holding my breath a little bit that your defense, on your defense, on the other hand, was, you know, was giving up some big, some lot of big plays against the Packers. And, you know, who came with this game, again, at 4-7. and seven. So, you know, I'll be holding my breath just a little bit if I was an Eagles fan. But, for, you know, for the most part, like I said, even though the offense scored 33 points, again, the defense turned around and gave up 40. And, you know, like I said, it's not completely the defense's fault. Like I said, Aaron Rodgers turned the ball over twice with two picks. Matt LaFleur's play calling a lot of times is just so inconsistent and bad. To where the offense can be moving, moving the ball really well by either running the ball and or finding some rhythm in passing, and then all of a sudden they'll just go into these this miraculous slump and and can't move the football to save their lives. You know you'll have you you know you'll have um, you know like the the previous game against the Titans, they had so many the offense had so many opportunities after the defense was actually you know making some stops towards the end of that game. They were making stops. They were keeping us in the football game in the offense with, I think, at least about four or five possessions in the second half. Just apps just could not score any points. They couldn't even pick up a first a, a first down. And that has to, and that and that's total blame goes to both Aaron Rodgers and Matt Lafleur's fucking play calling. Because Aaron Rodgers is out there trying to you know tough it up and work through a broken thumb on his on his throwing hand. And he's out there throwing inaccurate balls all over the place. Sure, I can respect the man for trying to tough it out and trying to play through the injuries. But if, you're, if your hand is bothering you that much, man, you just need to sit down. You just need to sit down. Because you're just hurting the team more than you're helping. You just got to call it what it is. And then, again, Matt LaFleur and his, and his, his, shitty, and his shitty fucking play calling as well. All that combined, you just have a completely inconsistent offense that can look like can, can look like a like they did just about a season or two ago, and then the next thing you know, again they go into this slump and they just go three and out, three and out, three and out. Can't move the football, can't pick up a first down. You know, after going down twenty to twenty seven, we get a great uh, kick return from Ke- Keyshawn Nixon, and what does the offense do? They go three and out. And then next thing you know, the Eagles get the ball right back, march down the field, and now we're down 20 to 34. You know, it's, th- it's, it's, things, like, it's things like that, man. So then that's why the Packers ultimately are 4 and 8. That's why they're 4 and 8, and why they're ultimately a terrible football team. You know, the, the, probably the biggest positives that's come out of this football team over the last couple of weeks has just been Christian Watson. You know, 
it would be it would have been amazing to have Christian Watson obviously and nice and healthy for the entire this entire year and playing the way that he's playing now. Who knows what might might the team be looking like now? If Christian Watson been playing like this from the beginning, but I do love and appreciate that the kid is finally finally finding his place in his offense and is making plays and catching the football. Okay, catching the key word, catching the football. So I pre- so I appreciate that, and I'm a, I'm really loving what I'm seeing from Christian Watson, and I definitely want to keep forward to seeing watching him play for sure, and see what we can not only get from him and Romeo Dobbs, both of those guys, those young guys out there together. It could be a really nice bright future with those two at, as our wide, at wide receiver for sure, if they both can continue on playing the way they have been playing. Before Romeo Dobbs went down, he was. You know, having a, himself a, a decent season. And Christian Watson now has just completely come out of nowhere. Now he's now nice and healthy since the Dallas Cowboys game. has now scored six touchdowns over the last three games. So I'm happy for him. I'm even happy for, I'm even happy for Jordan Love. Jordan Love came out there, and what does he do? He, he, he gets us downfield quickly, and we score the go to. And now it was what? After we scored that touchdown to Christian Watson, he just threw the pass, and he just took off. So those are some bright sides, right? Bright side. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> That's probably the bright side to a, to this overall failed season is those guys. So I don't. So I don't know where you go. So I just don't know where you go from here now, man. I don't know whether the Green Bay wants to if they want to continue on with Aaron Rodgers, despite the fact that now that he has a, not only a broken thumb but bruised cracked ribs. Do you want to sit him down and let him heal and start joining love, whatever, and see what you may have with the kid? They need at this point in time the Green Bay Packers just have to come to that decision. Because at this point it's not fair to Jordan Love to draft him and have him sitting behind Aaron Rodgers for now in the past three seasons, the same amount of time Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre, and you don't test you don't throw the kid out there and see what he can do. So the Packers ultimately need to make that decision probably obviously when this season ends, do they want to stick with their thirty nine year old quarterback? Or do they want to see what they can possibly have in the future with Jordan Love? They got to make that decision this offseason. I mean, I love Aaron Rodgers, and I appreciate everything he's done for this football team. And I and I, and 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 it, and, it, and it would suck to see him go. But, but right now with the way he's playing injured, the best thing the Packers probably can do is just let him rest and just sit him down and rest him. Because the season's over. You're not you're not going to the playoffs. You're not winning the championship. Just sit Aaron Rodgers, let him heal, and see what you can get from Joe and Love in the next couple weeks. I mean, what do you really got to lose? <laughs> nothing. You don't you have nothing to lose because the season is already over. But yeah, that's it. That's 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 about it for me, man. As I said at the beginning of this video, they are exactly who we thought they were. That Dallas Cowboys game had a lot of Packers fans fooled, and then they turned around and start and, and went right back into what they were against the Titans the next couple of days later. I mean, sure, this season a lot of a lot a lot. I mean, a lot of the things that the Packers are doing, and and doing now could have been definitely done earlier in the season. Because, like I said, Christian Watson, have he had he been playing like this much earlier in the season? Who knows what our record would look like if they had or if they would have given up. On Amari Rogers, right from the right from the get go, that and, and and roll with Keyshawn Nixon, who's been a hell of a lot better as a returner. That also leaves a lot of questions to be open. But again, just shows you just how terribly terribly coached this football team is. When you realize something, when you realize something is a problem and you don't do anything to fix it, that is completely on the organization. You can't even blame the pe- players at that point. You can't. You can't blame Amari Rodgers for the fact that, for the fact that, that the coaching staff kept throwing him out there despite the fact that he showed a tendency of not being a good returner and fumbling the ball. Why would you keep putting him back there? And each and 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 each, and, each, and, and some of those fumbles completely shifted the to shifted the game towards the opponent's ter- the, the, towards the opponent and they end up winning. Imagine if some of those fumbles didn't happen. Who knows what the results of those games could have been? And this is why I say ultimately that the reason why the Packers are now four and eight is it's it's good. The blame goes on everybody. It goes on everybody. It goes on the offense, the defense, the special teams, the coaching staff. It goes on everyone. I 
right? There's no, there's no one, there's no one finger that you can point. There's no not one finger that you can point to. Everybody is to blame here. And when you go into a football game and you're giving up forty points, no matter who the hell that team is, you're giving up forty points to your opposing team. You're sitting here getting completely ran down your throats with over three hundred plus yards. You ain't gonna be anybody in this league. So this team needs an absolute complete overhaul. Definitely needs to start with defense and get Joe Barry to freak out of here, man. Just get him to freak out of here. And Matt LaFleur, <laughs> he, 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 he's, he is what he is, man. He's a dope. A dope. But that's it, man. Peace.